Good day, welcome to Cumbria, the disused railway walk today. As you can see, it's raining and as you can probably hear, it's very windy. Just walked over that beauty. So it's a bit outside my locality, this, isn't it? Cumbria. So I'm on holiday at um, Centre Parks with family, which isn't uh, too far away, less than half an hour drive from here. So I thought it's just nice to explore a different part of the country. A brief bit of history and geography about what we're going to be seeing in this video. And here's where we are today. The South Durham and Lancashire Union Railway built a line linking the Stockton and Darlington Railway in the east with what is now the West Coast Main Line in the west at T-Bay. Passing through Barnard Castle and Kirby Stephen, it opened in 1861, known as the Stainmore Line, named after the Stainmore Summit. It later became part of the North Eastern Railway. At Kirby Stephen, the line split with the Eden Valley Line heading north towards Penrith. Passenger trains stopped running in 1952 and the Stainmore line closed as a through line 10 years later. Today we'll be starting our video at Kirkby Stephen before following the line through Smargill in the direction of T-Bay. But let's pick up in a very blustery Kirkby Stephen where we're going to start today's video. I'm just hiding underneath a bridge um, parapet at the moment. Um, it's sideways rain. Um, the weather forecast for today wasn't going to be that bad. It's going to rain all week, all the week that I'm away. Well, this was the best, uh, the best of the three days that I had the window to come out here. And it's sideways rain at the moment. I'm really not sure how this video is going to pan out. So I was going to fetch you on top of this footbridge to tell you a little bit about Kirby Stephen East Station and the Stainmore Railway that's uh, bringing that back to life but it's so windy up here, it stopped raining actually for a moment I've got a flock of sheep coming over, I'm not food Kirby Stephen East, which is the station closest to the actual town, opened in 1861, closing in 1962. As this old map shows, there's plenty going on with lots of lines, engine sheds and buildings. I'm currently filming from that footbridge to the west of the station. The Stainmore Railway Company are now based at the station site with the ultimate aim of restoring the Eden Valley Line as far as Walcott. Here's the railway company's Facebook page and we can see there's a little tank engine there just going underneath that bridge that we're currently stood on top of. That's looking the other way, that's where we're going to be heading today. Look at these posts, what are these posts for? So this is where the line um, down towards T-Bay that we're going on, we're going to be walking today, goes left and the line up towards Penrith. Um, the Eden Valley line goes to the right. I mean, that's how wet it's been today and yesterday. Look at that inside line there is completely under... Well, it's not completely underwater, but look, it's pretty much almost submerged. Appear to be trapped in. Oh, they're going... It's a congregation of sheep blocking the gate there for a moment. Can I get past? Not going to ram me, are you? Those arms look a bit sharp. So the railway is not open today. It is midweek and it is January, so I wouldn't expect it to be. But it, it would have been nice to have a look round, but it's about as close as we're going to get, really. But you can see the station sign there, Kirby Stephen East. You can see a water tower, you can see the end of the goods shed. I stick the camera above the fence, you can see the old goods shed, which is now on a caravan and camping site. Bit of a respite 
from the weather. It's looking through to the other side of the bridge that's infilled. Um, just looking into the, into the caravan park. I think that is the good shed. It's difficult to see from the bridge. Of course, that's Kirby Stephen East. That's not the only station in Kirby Stephen. There is the existing one on the Cell Carlisle line that used to be at Kirby Stephen West. But that is quite a, it's a good walk from the town there. And I know that because I, was, uh, I did that as a child. And it's not really a family friendly road to walk down. It's very busy and there's a lot of lorries. We're just moving north out of Kirkwood Stephen now and I'm just looking at that road that goes over the top of both lines. I don't normally drive between locations on these uh, explores um, but I'm just uh, making my way up to Smardale and there's a bit of trap bed that you can't access so but I'm just stopping off to pulled over to have a look at this bridge so this is the Eden Valley line down below there. Wow. You'd think it was a river. You're not walking through there anytime soon. So that's looking up towards Warcop and Appleby and Penrith that way. And then looking back down here. There we go. That's looking back towards Kirby Stephen. So this is, they're, they're hoping to get this um, restored. They're hoping to get the line eventually all the way through uh, to walk up where there's also uh, the Eden Valley Railway over in that direction and then another 50 yards or so um, up the same road uh, we've got another bridge and this is our line that we're going to be looking on this is uh, walking on so this is the T Bay line so that's a bit more accessible isn't it down there and this is a nature reserve you can actually walk on here but if I just swing you around the other side as well so that's the direction uh, we're going to be walking in today. So that's Wait Bit Green Rigs. That's a nature reserve there you can walk. So you can walk down the trap bed and along the top of the banking as well. But I'm heading down the line a bit more. I've just about another half a mile or so. I'm going to pick up the trap bed there. If I get time, I'm going to come down here and finish filming at this end. Does it do it every winter? Every winter, several times. Yeah, it does. You hear the wind howling in those trees. I parked up just at the little nature reserve car park outside uh, Smidale. This is the track bed we're on at the moment. So that's looking back to Kirby Stephen. Don't know what the situation is down there. I might, if I've got enough time when I come back, I will uh, head off down there. I'm looking in that direction. Um, it's the trap bed, so that's the way into Smardale. Well, it's completely flooded. We're, we're gonna have to go on the road. So I hope this is not gonna be uh, the tale of today. You can see down there, that's the trap bed. That's where I should be walking on at the moment chaps there's about a foot of water down there never mind it is what it is but uh, I have decided anyway next uh, next winter my uh, project's gonna be a uh, disused railways of the south of France so uh, looking forward to doing that one I promise this video is not gonna be all about me moaning about the weather but it has stopped it has stopped raining for now it's still a bit windy though so there's a lot of work gone in to this uh, little spot it's made it a lot more accessible for a lot more people it's part of a nature reserve it looks like it's really really well well managed it's nice to see this is the trap bed this is I've just come down just to where I wouldn't wasn't able to to get through so that's looking back I can see the car park from here it's just about 30 yards of water between uh, me and it. So it's looking down that way towards uh, Smardale. Um, in fact, I'm a bit sheltered down here. So it's Smardale Station. I'll tell you about that just while I'm down here. It's now a private residence, so we can't walk through it. Um, but the old station, is it Station Master's House? 
I think it's the Seisha Master's house I read it was, that's still there. Um, that's kind of now been done up. It looks, uh, I've just come past it in the kite, it looks really nicely, really nicely done. I'm not a fan of peeking in at people's houses, but you can see a little bit of platform down there in front of the station building there. Look, what a beautifully kept building that is. That uh, maroon around the beams at the top there. Just the other side of Smardale station. Um, we pick up the trap bed again, but here we are. We've got an old, some old bridge, bridge abutments, just as it's starting to rain again. And Smardale Hall, just in there, or was. Not sure if it's still there or not. So we'll come back, we can get back up to the trap bed now. Might just hide under here for a moment. So they just while this if it's a shower or something passes through. I do like it when an area takes pride in the, in the history, things like this. Uh, and I know the emphasis is on the, the nature reserve, but it is intertwined with the railway. So got some information boards here. It's about the Smardale Smart Gill Viaduct. I'm gonna be seeing that. And we've got a map, it's probably a good time just to show you where we're going. So we've parked there. Um, uh, sorry, we're currently there. That's it, so we're walking down past the Settle and Carlisle line, underneath one of their viaducts, and down to, uh, to Smardale Gill Viaduct. Then we're gonna be having a look at the old lime kilns just south of there, and just seeing how far we get. I don't think we're gonna make it all the way um, down to the next station. So where we are on the trap bed. Looks like single track, doesn't it? I do believe it was single track on the section we're walking on today at least. It did close in the 1960s. I'm not expecting to find infrastructure and, uh, and signaling things down here, but we can see where well, you can see we're on quite a sizable banking, but you can see ballast slum. And just as I say, we're not gonna find any old pieces of railway infrastructure. Look at that. We've got a, a tensioner bracket there, look. Just noticing something on the side of the uh, of the trap bed here. So, got this big pile of trees that's been cut and cut down. I don't know if we can get any closer in this, but look, that's like a fireplace there, doesn't it? Fought my way through the trees. I'm going to put you down there, look. You can still see inside there. Assuming this, there's lots of, there's plenty of bricks Look at that, all that bricks there, pieces of wood. I'm assuming this would have been the site of an old, let's get out of this tree, sorry. Um, the site of an old plate layers hut, possibly. But it's gonna be something, isn't it? It's got a fireplace in there. Tell you what, you can just, trying to put yourself in the shoes of those men who used to work and maintain these railway lines. That'd be a godsend. Do we one right now? Nice fire. We will continue. So the next feature we're going to see is uh, is the first uh, first of today's viaducts, and we're not going over this viaduct. Um, it's just coming up in front there. This is a Smardale viaduct. So this is this is the Settle and Carlisle line. This is an active railway line. This is just, uh, another bridge. on the approach, I assume that's just a farm, farm bridge, lovely colour stones isn't it, look at the red, red shade on that one, so there's the, there's the viaduct, not the greatest view from here, lots of trees blocking it, it's quite a beast, it's no ribberled but it's still, still a good length, So stood underneath the Settle and Carlisle Railway. I dare not think how many times I've travelled over the top of this bridge that we're stood under at the moment. When I was growing up, for years and years, we was up here, we was up on this, up on the Settle and Carlisle, nearly every other weekend we was 
there's always some kind of steam rail tours, west coast diversions, or just family days out. Appleby was a was a family favourite um, day out. Lots of uh, lots of days spent in Appleby on the family rail card. Quite a trek now, when you think about it. So we'll continue. Leaving that Smardale viaduct behind us there. We'll face you the other way around because we're still getting pelted with, with the rain right into the direction we're walking in. But we've got to look over here. Wow, that's a huge drop down there. The size of that drop. And we're clinging to the side of the valley, literally. Because on this side, we've also got a huge hillside and we've kind of been cut away into the side of the hill. Yeah, rain keeps coming and going. Blue sky now in front. Crossing a little bridge here. Right, it's opening out a little bit more into the valley now. Here we go get a bit of better of view. Better view of what we've been walking down. Scandal back down there. Now first view of the Smardell Gill viaduct that we're going to be going across shortly. base of a concrete post, just on the side. And cue the wind. We're going out into the open now. I have got wind protection on the camera. It is, it is a bit extreme today though. But a smart Del Gill viaduct right in front of us. Ah, oh, this has got all the information I need. So that's looking onto the viaduct. Like with these things though, the best view isn't always from on top of the viaduct. So I'm gonna take that path down to the left. And before I walk over the viaduct, I'm gonna have a look at it um, from a better vantage point. Over this style. It's gonna to be too windy to talk here. So I'm just gonna play some music while I show you the footage. Beautiful piece of engineering. Thought I had a lot in the wind for a moment there. Retaining wall. I'm going to be walking over and walking a little bit. You can see the lime kilns in the distance there. Right, again, it's going to be too noisy with the wind, so I'll just walk you over and play some music or do some editing over the top. I'm genuinely struggling to keep the camera straight walking over here as the wind attempts to take control. The Smardale Guild Viaduct crosses the Scandal Beck at almost 30 metres high at its highest point. There's 14 arches and a total length of 170 metres. If British Rail had their way, the viaduct would have been demolished, but instead it was listed and saved, and British Rail even contributed the cost of the demolition towards the repair of the structure. It's thanks to the dedicated volunteers and the tireless work of the trusts involved that we can enjoy walking over it today.
straight into a cutting. Oh, that's a lot better now. Out of the wind a bit. I mentioned we used to come on the Settle Carlisle a lot. Just as the wind starts to pick up as I start talking again. Um, we used to come over that other viaduct we came underneath. And I always remember looking back down this valley. I'm sure it was this valley and seeing the disused viaduct, but there's no line of sight now. I don't know if that's because of the trees between the two viaducts. So we're just on the top of the hillside. We're just on where that reinforced wall was down the side there coming up to the lime works now the lime kilns lime kilns see the ovens inside there bit too high to see from uh, trap bed level. So here's the information board tells you a little bit at the top where it was shoveled in. So this was a side in and he says the the um, the line was just pushed straight into the wagons to the side in here. I presume that means underneath because that's where it would be coming out. A quick line. Not a bad view, is it? It's not a day for a picnic, is it, though? Look at the water. Pushing into the uh, to the beck. I mean, it's, it's called a beck. That's bigger than some rivers, isn't it, that? It's had some water going into it over these last few days. Yeah, I've just mentioned, I read there was an inclined plane here. I'm guessing, obviously, it's where they took a method of getting the, the, uh, the the limestone and here's the quarry look so I've not crossed any fences or anything like that but um, I'm guessing this was where they got the lime on top of the of the, uh, of the ovens There's the ovens, the top of the ovens there. A bit, again, I'm cautious because it's so windy. Don't want to be uh, blown off balance, the ambulance. Men are on strike today. It's not the time to be getting it into any misdemeanors. Sleepers there. They look like stonework off the bridge as well, don't they? This is quite clearly a replacement bridge built on the old bridge abutments. Certainly seen better days, haven't they? Those. There's that bridge. This old building on the side of the railway, I'm assuming this is railway related. Look, it's got a, it's got, they got a gate directly onto the, onto the train, to the side of the uh, trap bed. Pack Horse Bridge, 15th century, it's just in front of us there.
I've been pondering whether or not to carry on or turn around now since the lime kilns because the weather just doesn't it hasn't stopped raining it seems to have got worse since the viaduct um if it was a nicer day i'd probably carry on as far as we can get i mean that's what i'm talking about it's just the fighting the rain on the lens and the wind um so i think i'll head back now i mean i've seen seen the viaduct I've had a good walk down the disuse railway seen a few interesting things and who knows maybe the scope for a for a revisit from ever in the area in the future the last few miles of the branch line towards t bay is actually now the a685 so you can actually drive down the last few miles of the track bed and as I'm driving down there, I could see the little bridges with the little culverts going underneath. It was obvious that it used to be a railway line. So when I returned home, the more I thought about it, the more convinced I was that I was going to return one day and do the sections that I didn't manage to do. So the bits closer to Kirby Stephen and the bit further out, the cutting towards Ravenstone Dale. That's better. So into the safety of this shed that looks like an old railway carriage so definitely the right decision to turn around that last uh, couple of miles back there was absolutely biblical i am soaked right down and i hope the weather hasn't caused too much of a detrimental effect on uh, on the footage that i've captured today if it's uh, if it's all unusable i'm going to be absolutely devastated but that was fantastic they've done a really good job at managing this trail and that was really enjoyable that i put that up there alongside the monsoon trail that was a really really interesting um in interesting journey today and it's not all sunshine and smiles and you know it's sometimes it's uh, it's good just to document the adventure and the adversity that you sometimes come across on these explorers but there's a nice warm shower waiting for me back at uh, back at my lodge back at center parks so i'll sign off thanks for watching take care from cumbria i'll see you soon